Good morning. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ronald. And what a delight to say good morning, Lightcast. Because every Sunday afternoon, we say good afternoon in Jersey City. Uh, when I was with Lighthouse of Faith with Pastor Alex Bonifacio, for a while, he would stand up and say, Good morning. I am delightful to be here. And for quite a while, we just allowed him to say that until one day we told him, Pastor Alex, it should be delighted. But I know you are delightful. But uh, we thank you to be here. So are you delighted to be here? Amen. Wow. From the fourth floor to the second floor, uh, where else after this? Where else? Where else? We don't know. But the beauty of this is wherever we are, when God is present, it is a holy ground. Amen? And God is not a waster of time. Do you know that God knows you're here? God appointed this time just for you and for me. It's not me at all. The holy God will be here. Actually, just to encourage you, who among you here are still praying? My goodness, not all are praying. I only see a few hands. Uh, uh, are you still praying? Yes. Is God answering? Yes. Are you waiting for something to be answered? Yes. Amen. Have you experienced an answer to prayer? Yes. yes. I just experienced, Lloyd and I, an answer to prayer last Wednesday. We have been praying for something that has been heavy on our hearts. And God sent three angels. You know the names of the angels in the Bible? Yes. There are many angels. Some of them, they have names. But last Wednesday, I met three of them. Ives Nasius. <laughs> Jomar Nasius. And Jekenius. They did not come with wings. They come in a car and with muscles. And praise God, they moved things from the attic to the second floor, to the first floor, to the basement. So praise God with me. Yeah. Amen. And also my brother Rene, Pastor Rene Manansala, is sending his greetings to you. Thank you for praying for Mary. Mary is sitting down. Uh, Mary is walking. And according to my brother, she is about to be discharged. And then... For rehab, and then my prayer for her is, Lord, heal her for herself. Heal her to be a wife to Rene. Heal her to be a mother to, to their children. And also, since you call them to ministry, please let them serve. And actually, my prayer is, please don't take them home yet. Amen? And today is April 30th. You know what I just realized? So 2023, 1975, how many years is that? 48? Is that 48? 48 years ago, I was in Masantol, Pampanga. I was praying. Actually, my prayer was not delightful. I was complaining to God. Because on that day, somehow, my mother scolded me. And I was praying to God. And I said, God, my mother scolded me. And in the middle of my prayer, you know what God said? Romy, I don't care if your mother scolded you. In Greek, it said, Ala kong pakilab, nung namin sasabihan ng imam mo keka. That's in Greek. You know, I don't know how you talk to God. Do you talk to God? Can you hear God? Do you listen to God? Yes. 
So in the middle of my prayer, I was expressing my sadness and disappointment. And when God said, Robbie, I don't really care about your mother is calling you. You know, when God does that to me, I pay attention. I pay attention. So I said, God, so God, why are you saying that? You know what God said? Romy, how about my call to you in ministry? See, that uh, a year ago before that date on April 30th, on March 6, 74, I trusted Jesus. And on that same day, he called me to ministry. And for a year, from March 6 to April 30th, after I graduated from high school, and I'm going to confess this, and God has forgiven me already, and please forgive me, amen? <laughs> I was a liar. And let me tell you my lie. When I go to church, they ask me, Pastor Romy, are you going to be a pastor? Yes. But after, when I was out of church, I would say to God, God, please don't make me to be a pastor. So that's the background. On April 30th, I was praying. And God said, how about my call to you? Then God said, you better pay attention to my call. And the next day, May 1st, 1975, I gave God some conditions that were impossible. And then... God fulfilled them, so I have been in ministry since 1975. Why am I saying this? Because when God speaks, the earlier we listen, the earlier we obey, He's going to change the trajectory of our life. If you and I heard God, and we run away from God, and we neglect God, and we disobey Him, your life will never be enjoyed. If we end here, for me, that message is enough. So I come here this morning to deliver God's word to you. And another reminder, I don't know your age, but if you are younger than me or same age as me or older than me, we cannot change the past. But if God speaks to you today or if God has been speaking to you, my encouragement, say yes. Say yes and God is going to open all doors. All doors to you. So let me release God's word to you that was read in AD 62. Okay, this word was written in AD 62, but it happened in AD 52. So there was a 10-year difference. This is Acts 16. Let me just read it to you, starting verse 25. And the background is, after they helped a slave girl, Instead of being praised and honored, they beat them up <laughs> and then they put them in jail. And this is now the beginning of the story. This story happened in AD 52 and then written in AD 62. And we are enjoying it today in 2023. Isn't God great? Amen. And I can tell you with all my heart that there is something here for you and for me. So here is the word of God. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Now just to clear the picture, they were not like Will, standing up right here. They were blooded. They were bleeding. They were wounded. Their neck was clamped. Their hands were clamped. Their feet were clamped. They could not move inside that jail, and yet they were singing to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. 
And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. How do you like to wake up one day and say, hey, I'm just going to work. And then you want to work and something happened in your job where you're about to lose your job. How many of us here can afford to lose a job? You don't want to raise your hand. And not only about to lose a job, this keeper of the prison, the Philippian jailer, was about to kill himself. I don't know what you're going through, but please hear me. Don't kill yourself. Killing yourself is not the solution. It will create more problems. But Paul called him with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Even I will tremble if I'm going to lose my job. Because if I lose my job and I kill myself, my wife will be husbandless. Do you see the connection? If this man loses his job, there will be no supporter for his family. And if he kills himself, his wife will become a widow and his children will become fatherless. And if they have employers in their home, they will lose their jobs. The domino effect in a bad way is going to happen. But here, he was trembling before Paul and Silas. Verse 30 says, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, I don't think this Philippian jailer was talking about how can I go to heaven? I don't think he was thinking about that. He was just thinking, hey, how can I keep my job? How can I keep my life? How can, how can I support my wife, my children? Basically saying, how can you help me on earth? Now, what I'm saying here is, when you and I read the Gospels of Jesus, he did not talk to people to tell them, hey, why don't you follow me so that you can go to heaven? Would you read again the Gospels? The Gospel in the ministry of the Lord Jesus, heaven is a fruit of following him, but we don't go to heaven right away. We stay on earth, but Jesus says, follow me. I'm going to use you. And follow me, I'm going to take care of you. And when you die, you go to heaven. So we need Jesus to go to heaven, but we need Jesus on earth. Okay, please, that's our ministry. So he was saying, sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them to, into his house, he set food before them. And he rejoiced, having believed in God with all is his household. I told you the story happened in AD 52. Paul wrote to them in AD 62. The reason I'm pointing this out, look what can happen in a span of 10 years. AD 52, they ministered to Lydia and, the, and her family. A slave girl was ministered to. They went to prison. The jailer and family and Philippian church was born. And then 10 years after that event, the Apostle Paul was in the Roman prison. He wrote to the church in Philippi. The Philippian church supported the Apostle Paul. Now let's bring it home to us today. Today is April 30, 2023. Am I right? Are you right? Are you here? So let's go back. Your life. April 30, 2013, or 10 years ago, how were you doing then? How were you 10 years ago? 
Are you thinking now? Are you, are you going back year after year? Let me tell you how I was doing 10 years ago. Are you ready? 10 years ago, I was in debt. And my debt was about $600,000. Yes, I made big mistakes. 10 years ago, I was not in full-time ministry. I made a mistake. I declared myself part-time in ministry without consulting God. So warning to those in ministry. And also, our expenses were 100% and our income was 50%. Are you following me? How will you survive? Your expenses are 100% and your income is 50%. Today is April 30, 2023. I'll tell you later how we are doing today. I don't know what God will do 10 years in the future. Let's see if Jesus does not come back yet. So, with the story in Acts 16, I like to connect Acts 16 and Philippians chapter 4. Again, Acts 16 story happened in AD 52, written in AD 62, and God somehow is allowing us to go back and look at these two passages so that we can do this. If you look at the next slide, I put a lot of verbs. You know what verbs are, right? They're action words. Actually, these action words, the verbs, are incomplete. I would like to encourage you, actually, to put your own verbs there. Because here is my challenge to you and to me as we listen to the Holy Spirit. That you and I, to start, to continue to strengthen, to keep, to guard, to enjoy, to restore, to return, and share meaningful relationships relationships, so that God can resource you. What meaningful relationships are we going to look at? This is where we look at both Philippians 4 and Acts 16. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 and following, the Word of God says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lack opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound, but er Abound Everywhere and in all things I have learned, both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The first relationship where we need to have a meaningful relationship with is with the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of God. Hey, Will, did you know I'm going to preach this today? Did you know? Why did you lead the first song? The power of Jesus. We should connect the dots. You know, we, we preachers, when we are preparing, we are like a pregnant woman. Look at Pastor Rodan. He looks like a pregnant woman. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, you don't know this. Actually, I'm telling uh, our, our coaches and church splendor apprentice, uh, Eves, Jake, and Jomar, don't lose the feeling of being scared before you preach. Because if you lose that, you're going to depend on yourself. So we preachers, actually, we struggle when, when we prepare. Especially when we want to deliver God's message. We feel like we are a pregnant woman. There's turmoil inside of us. Or another, another picture is 
it's like having an indigestion, you know, uh, uh, with so many things in there. And you only know that you have delivered God's word is when that feeling goes away and you deliver God's word. And I'm feeling that right now. I'm feeling this right now, that the power of Jesus will make a difference in your life because you are today, if you say, yes, Jesus, I'm going to start a relationship with you. Yes, Jesus, I'm going to return to a relationship with you. I don't know your verb. Maybe your verbs would say, yes, Jesus, I'm going to treasure my relationship with you. I don't know. What is your verb? You don't need to tell me that. You need to tell Jesus. You know why? I have a hundred one percent. If you and I do that today, when we pass through that exit door and that elevator and we go out the street, your life will be different. Only if you say yes to him. Because look what happened to the jailer. Because Paul and Silas had a relationship with Jesus, the power of God. What will they offer? They will offer Jesus the power of God. Look what happened. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What can they offer? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Side note here, I have eternal life by faith in the Lord Jesus. Do you? So on earth, you have Jesus. Amen? So if you die, you go to Jesus. Amen? I think I'll be lonely in heaven. I don't think there is loneliness in heaven if, if Loida is not there. Uh, if my children will not be there. If my grandchildren will not be there. I don't know the way, how, the way you pray for your family, but let me share to you part of my prayer. I said, God, from me and Lloyd to our children and grandchildren and future generations until you come, Lord Jesus, please make this generation from me and Lloyd to be lovers of God, lovers of the Bible, lovers of Jesus Christ, lovers of righteousness, because I want to see all of us from Loida and I to our children, grandchildren, next generation until Jesus comes to be all in heaven. And this verse gives us hope. Amen? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. So the power of God is the first relationship we need to have. And let me give you an assignment. What is this power of God? The gospel. I did not put the verse, Romans 1.16. That is your assignment to look at that verse. What is this power of God? The Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1.23 and 24. I did not write the verse. Paminsan-minsan, kasama naman kayo. Okay? Paminsan-minsan, hindi is food feeding. Yeah? You need to go back. See, don't just come to be fed. You've got to feed yourself. Only this left side is saying amen. <laughs> so I like this side, but I better move to this side. <laughs> but I really, really enjoy it. So, again, put your verbs. To start, to continue, to strengthen, to keep, to guard, to enjoy, to restore, to return and share a meaningful relationship with the Lord Jesus, the power of God who can resource you. On my drive here, so I need to treasure this relationship. I need to cherish this relationship. I don't know your verbs, but put them there. What other meaningful relationship? In verse 14, Philippians 4, Paul continued his writing to them and said, Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, 
No church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to you account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you. A sweet, swelling, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. Wow. The next relationship we need to have is not only with the power of God, but with the people of God. Again, going back to Acts 16, who did God use for the Philippian jailer and his family? Paul and Silas. Were they in good condition? No. They were beaten up. They were wounded. They were bleeding. They were in prison. You know, they were not normal. They were not having a good time. But God sent them. You know what that says? God can use you. God can use me. When we say, yes, I want to have a personal relationship with you. Look at what happened here. Then they, Paul and Silas, spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. When Jesus changes a person, that person becomes like Jesus. Amen? Because look at this. A while ago, this Philippian jailer was saying, Oh my goodness, I'm going to lose my job. Let me kill myself. But when he heard the message of the power of Jesus, thank you, Will, and the kindness of the people of God, and he received the word of God, look what happened in verse 33. He took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes. The man who put shackles on their necks, on their hands and arms, on their legs, is now washing the feet of Paul and Silas. Because when God changes a person's life, He changes the thinking and the actions and the heart. Instead of doing bad things, they start doing good things. That's the power of God. But the beauty of here, and immediately, He and all His family were baptized. I'm the first believer in my family. Before me, there was no Christian. There were no Christians in my family. And when my family learned that I was reading the Bible, they thought I was going away from God. Especially when they thought I was becoming a Baptist. In fact, they did not call us Baptists in Pampanga. They call us Bantres. If you're old enough, Bantres is a poultry name for chicken. Bantres. You Bantres. And when I walked the fields in Pampanga, my relatives would look at me and point to my face, you are crazy. I said, why am I crazy? You're reading the Bible. You don't know what you're saying inside my head because the Bible is not making me crazy. It's making me closer to God. Amen. But my parents did not know that. But this, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. After 13 years, my father, my mother, Pastor Rene, Mary, Mona, Rick, followed Jesus. Pastor Alex Bonifacio baptized them. And they sent me a VHS tape. Do you remember that? A VHS tape. They were being baptized in Pampanga River. They sent it to me. I was watching and I was crying. One day, you're going to cry. One day you're going to cry tears of joys because as you believe in the Lord Jesus, the gospel has entered your home and your family members will become followers of the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 So don't, don't lose hope. Who are the people of God? All followers of the Lord Jesus around the world now, but all followers of the Lord Jesus around you now. What you're, whatever you're going through right now, don't think of the people of God who are not here. Are you with me? If they are not here, they are not here. Got it? Rick Warren said, If a Christian or Christians tell you, By the way, 
I will not be in church on Sunday. But my spirit will be there. Rick Warren said, do you know what that means? Rick Warren said, nothing. It means nothing. Because if I don't go to church, you don't go to church, our spirit will not go to church. If there's a spirit in church, that's not me. Okay? That is not you. Because if there's a spirit in church, those chairs, that's scary. That's scary. But let's put this. How are you really doing? Do you need the people of God? The people of God around you, you need to start a relationship with them. Or if there are some people that are struggling, you are the people of God. So would you start? Continue, strengthen, keep, guard, enjoy, restore, return, share a meaningful relationship with the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, the people of God who can resource you. Lastly, you like that word, amen? <laughs> Lastly, what other meaningful relationships? Verse 19, Philippians 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Do you like this verse? Yes. Do you believe this verse? Is this verse for all? Yes. No. <laughs> this is not for all. You must learn how to interpret the Bible. When there is a promise in the Bible, there is a condition. You must first fulfill the condition before you can experience the promise. Getting it? So if a person is in need, don't use this verse. Don't tell that person, don't worry. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. It is true that God provides, but not this verse. Are you with me? It's not this verse. Not this verse. So how can we use this verse? Let's put it in context. All right? The Apostle Paul, who was he? He was an apostle. He was serving. He was in prison. And then there was the Philippian church. Who was there? Probably Lydia and her family. Probably the slave girl and her family. Maybe she got married. I don't know. Uh, we'll know in heaven. And perhaps the Philippian jailer and his wife and his children and others. Because 10 years. A church should grow in 10 years. Amen? Amen. I don't know where Lightcast will be, will be in 10 years. Do you? No, we don't. But if we keep on doing this, Lightcast will double, 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 double. Amen? will spread everywhere. Amen? Amen? I've been always talking to Pastor Rodan. Pastor Rodan, I see a triangle. I see Lightcast Maspeth. I see Lightcast Hudson County, Jersey City. I see Lightcast Bergen County. I see a triangle. I see a triangle. So let, let's go back to verse 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. How can we claim this? We can only claim this when there is a worker of God that a Christian or a church says, Hey, we will support you. We will help you. We will give you things. We will give you money. And whatever I give, remember when we give, Susan said we could give. Don't be tight. I like that. Don't be tight. Because we are the tighters. Are you tighters? Or tithers. Uh, you're not tithers. So let's say, Coach Evans, can you come here? Yeah, here. You say. <laughs> what if I bless Evans? This is my wallet, right? What if I bless Evans? Evans, you're a worker of God, are you? Okay, what if I bless you? Okay, take it, right? Now, if I bless him that way, whatever I gave to him is now less in my wallet. Are you with me? It doesn't matter if it is a, 
your tithe. It doesn't matter if it is your offering. It doesn't matter if it is your love gift. It doesn't matter if it is your sacrificial giving. It doesn't matter if it is your first fruit. It's less than what you have. You can keep that. Thank you. I have more of those. I have, I have a Chinese uh, copier. <laughs> no, no. She she Tosha. Before I conclude, let me just tell you. Do you, like, do you like planting? Why do you plant? Because you want it to grow and because you want it to bear fruits. I like planting. I like fishing. But lately, I have been planting money everywhere. I've been planting money everywhere. If I plant money and that grows, it will produce more money. But anyway, let's go back to verse 13 and close this. When you are led by God to support a worker of God, then this verse is for you. Okay? The workers of God, please listen to this. We are not working for God to make money. We are not working for God to get your money. Are you with me? If there's a worker of God who's working to get your money, don't go near that person. Okay? Don't go. Because that's not the intent. But you must also realize that the workers of God need money to survive. Because the landlord expects to be paid. The insurance and car, they need to be paid. The grocery, they need to be paid. We cannot go there. I said, I'm Pastor Roby. I like this food but I don't have any money. That's not possible. So, God takes care of His children. God takes care of His church. God takes care of everyone. But sometimes, the workers of God are in need or sometimes they are not even in need and God tells a Christian, a church, and a group of Christians, hey, bless the worker of God. Have you ever experienced that? You want to have a meaningful relationship with the promises of God. When God speaks to you, don't debate anymore. Don't debate. Because if you debate, you will become stubborn. And you're going to miss the voice of God. And remember this. Money is the smallest blessing that God gives. Okay? It's the smallest blessing. It's, it's a, in, in the area of blessings, it's the ground floor. When God is able to control your money, the smallest blessing, the blessings on top of money are better than money. Amen. But if you cannot be trusted with money, God cannot trust you with anything. Okay? So, I don't know what promise of God is giving you. But if this one is being given to you by God, in context... It's only true when you support a worker of God. This will happen to you. Again, go back to your time in the Bible, time with God, and see what God is telling you. And it's the promise to the jailer. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Believe that promise. Now we had brought them into his house. He set food before them. And he rejoiced having believed in God with all his household. The promises of God are the preserved word of God. Used to be with Moses. It was in a tablet, right? And scrolls. It used to be before the cell phones. We had our paper Bible. Now our cell phone, the Bible, is, it's preserved. And the preserved word of God is like a refrigerator freezer where all our foods are stored and with all our cabinets. But we can only want 
we can only eat one food at a time. Are you with me? We cannot eat everything in a refrigerator. <laughs> right? We only eat a particular item. Because of that, in our Bible, the totality of the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, do you know your Bible? There is one Bible. Are you with me? There are two divisions. Do you know them? Old Testament and New Testament. And these two are subdivided. The law and the gospel, the history of Israel, the history of Christianity, also the poetry and the letters and the prophecy. One, two, four. Do you know the books of the Bible? You better learn them. You better be able to say Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Right? And you can continue if you want. But when God takes the word and pulls out a particular word that is for you. And believe that if it is a promise, then fulfill the condition. So let's close. Ten years ago, 2013, I told you we were in that $600,000. Would you like to know where we are now? We are debt free. <laughs> to the glory of God. Let me tell you what I did. At first, I prayed this prayer. God, help me to make money. Wrong prayer. <laughs> How can I make money? I'm a pastor. Then I read the Lord's Prayer. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And I told God, God, I know this talks about sins. But I like to apply it to my debts. So I said, God, I forgive those who owes me money. Warning. Don't loan money to brothers and sisters in the family. Are you listening to me? Don't loan money to your relatives. Are you listening to me? I loan my brother money. I loan Lloyd's brother money. They both died. And I was doing their funeral. <laughs> While I was doing the funeral, I was comforting the family, but I was talking, why did you die? <laughs> Jojo, why did you die? <laughs> Honest. Bong, why did you die? You owe me money. But I forgave them. I don't know what you're going through. Again, money is the smallest blessing. So, I'm back in ministry. I've been at Church Planting Catalyst for nine years. Ten years by January 1st, 2014. And we have two family income. Actually, we have more money today in our lifetime. I keep on telling Lloyd, uh, we got so used to having money. Every time before, we would say, oh, we cannot buy that. We don't have any money. Now I tell Lloyd, uh, you could buy anything. <laughs> you have lots of money. Shop anywhere around Marshalls. <laughs> Don't go out. <laughs> just marshals. <laughs> and I promise I'll just shop in Costco. <laughs> That's all I do. He said, God, good. Really, honestly, if you buy a car now, I told her, we'll cash the car. That's how God good is. If you buy a house at this particular price, we could buy that house. 
the goodness of God. Start, continue, strengthen, keep, guard, enjoy, restore, return, share a meaningful relationship with the Word of God. Pastor Rodel, close this. You are our pastor. What do you need? The Lord Jesus, the power of God, the followers of the Lord Jesus, the people of God, the Word of God, the promise of God. How will you respond? Our pastor will help us. Thank you. You have heard God's word spoken today. And as the prophets would actually declare, Thus saith the Lord. And right now, while you are listening, some of you are actually wishing inside you. And you're thinking, That's me. Some of you are actually asking, How could this pastor know we he doesn't even know me I don't even know him I'm not really sure we don't even know your distance from the Lord how's your relationship with your wife with your husband in your family we don't even know that if you're struggling with your job struggling with your finances, struggling even in your business. But these are what I'm, I want you to know. That as Pastor Romy had spoken today, and you are hearing, that's me. It's not him who's speaking to you. That is the Holy Spirit knocking at the door of your heart. And telling you that whatever you are going through, I can handle this. And some of you, it might be your first time, second time, or even third time here in Lightcast. And maybe you are thinking this way. I'll come back to God. I'll go back to God. If I had already fixed the wrong things in my life. Wrong. You cannot do it. The only way that things in your life that you can straighten up, it's not by your own strength, not by your own righteousness, but here's what the Lord God is telling you according to the scriptures. He said, He who knew no sin, He who didn't sin at all, became sin for you, for us that we might become God's righteousness in Him. I know that life has been burdensome, right? I was like, talking with someone and told me the other day, Pastor, why do we say that life is unfair? I was talking with my kids, right? And my eldest, Joe Boy, actually said that, well, life really is unfair. But we are assured of this, that if you are in Christ, God's grace is always more than enough for you. So right now, I'm going to end in prayer. And I don't know your proximity to the Lord God, but today, the Lord God just wants you to come. To come to Him. Maybe it's the first time that you're going to do that. Come. Maybe you've done this before, but you kind of like lost your way. The invitation of God has come. Or maybe you are now connected with the Lord God and you are enjoying that relationship, but God has more for you. And God is going to use you, use your life 
for those who are around you. So the invitation of God for you again today, come. Because you are meant to become a leader. And right now, maybe you are already a leader. But you know the burden that is on your shoulders. The burden that you want to see that those you are leading are going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ with all their hearts. And you, you're, you might be struggling in doing that. You might be struggling in actually leading someone who is hard-headed, stiff-necked. But let me tell you, weren't you the same before? So the Lord Jesus Christ again is telling you, come. Come. So again, if you want to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God is telling you, what destroyed that is sin. We were separated from God. But today, the Lord God is inviting you to say yes to Him. Do you want to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? If that's the prayer of your heart, as I pray, I'm going to invite you to pray with me. It's not the prayer that is going to save you. It's not, the prayer that, it's not my prayer that's going to save you. It is the grace of God that is being offered to you now that you are going to receive in faith. And the Lord God said that belief in the heart so it should start here and with the mouth confession is turned unto salvation. So I invite you if you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ today and here's promise to you that he had come that you might have life and that is eternal life and that you might have it while you are here on earth life to the fullest. If that's the desire of your heart Pray with me. Let's bow down our heads and let's close our eyes and let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the very wonderful message we got today. Oh, Lord, it's just amazing to know, Lord, that you loved us, Lord God. And it's not just simple, Lord God, that you told us, Lord God, I love you. But, Lord God, there are things that you have done all throughout eternity. There are things that you are still doing today, Lord God, to show us that. And even, Lord God, that you are making us, Lord God, look forward, Lord God, to the future, to eternity. Again, Lord God, that you are, you have loved us and you are changing us from glory to glory. Thank you, Lord. You gave us your word. You gave us your church. You gave us yourself. Thank you, Lord. And right now, Lord God, I pray that for some of us that this will be the day that they are going to receive salvation. So again, if that's the desire of your heart, follow me in prayer and believe that when you do, the Lord God promises that whosoever believes in Him shall never perish but have everlasting life. Again, so if you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, follow me yeah, don't mind the people around you. Pray loudly with me. Right? Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. Let's pray. Lord God, come on, follow me in prayer. Lord God, thank you for loving me. Lord God, I am so sorry for all the things that I had done against you. I'm sorry, Lord, that I've neglected you and made other things, other people, to be my priority. Thank you, Lord, for your promise of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, that you gave me the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I come to you and I thank you for dying on the cross of Calvary for shedding your blood so that I can be cleansed from all my sins. Lord Jesus, I now open my heart, I open my soul, and I say yes. I want to receive you 
as my Lord and my Savior. And from this day on, you are my Lord, my Master, my Boss, my Christ, my God. Thank you, Lord, for your promise that I now have eternal life. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. All right, let's give it up all to the Lord God. Thank you.